Early last winter I had two big branches of this tree cut down because they were threatening my house. And I got a bunch of pieces that I would really like to turn into lumber. So along with those over there, I've also got these ones, which are smaller, but there are a couple of big pieces in here as well. Now this wood is hard maple, and it's going to be a little bit difficult to cut up. I don't have a chainsaw to make a chainsaw mill, but I've got everything to make a bandsaw mill, so I think I'll do that just to try it out. And now if we come in here to the workshop, I've already got some of the stuff uh, set out that I'm going to be using to build it. I've got the motor that I bought to build my new table saw. This is a two horsepower and it's totally enclosed, fan cooled, so good for this. Now this saw is not going to be anything too fancy. It's just going to be quickly made so that I can cut up those pieces into boards or thicker pieces. I have to wait and see, and see how the saw cuts before I decide how thick the lumber will be. So I got this piece of MDF here, three quarter, and I'm gonna make the wheels out of this. That'll be the first thing I'll do. I've determined that the best wheel size is 16 inches, so I'll cut two out of here. I've got my beam compass here to draw the circle. I think that the six inch aluminum pulley is too small. I really don't have a good match for it in the smaller pulley. So I'm gonna make a new one, a seven inch one, maybe seven and a half from this three quarter inch plywood. I guess I could have went out and bought a real seven inch pulley, but the idea was to use what I had on hand to make this, make it quickly. It really won't take long to do this. I'm gonna drill a five eighths inch hole in the middle now because that'll slip onto the shaft that I'm gonna use and I'll be able to turn it on the lathe. I've never done this before, but I think I'm going to try to put this chuck on my lathe. Uh, the jaw is open to five eighths of an inch, so they should, you know, the shaft that I'm going to use should fit right in there. Uh, the taper on here, I'm not sure. I'll have to try it. But like I say, I haven't done it before. First time for everything. Well, they certainly look the same. I'll just slip it in and see how it fits. All right, I got the shaft put in and I've slipped the disc on. I've also put a stop collar on here and tightened up the set screw. Just gonna take some hot melt glue and glue the stop collar onto the plywood and that will stop it from spinning, hopefully. One thing I've noticed is that the chuck will not stay in that taper. It'll wobble out, so I've got to move the tailstock up and put the live center against the end of the shaft. Okay, I'm not looking for perfection here with this. 
It just has to drive the wheel and the belt has to fit in there reasonably well. It looks like it does. Ideally, I would attach the pulley that I just made directly to the side of the wheel like this, but I think that that belt would be a little bit too close to the wheel itself. So I'm going to make another smaller disc to go in between to act as a spacer, and then I'll glue the pulley to the disc, the disc to the wheel. Next thing is I need to drill a hole in the middle of this for this shaft, the 5 8 inch hole. Now uh, this is too big for my drill press, so I'm going to do it freehand with the hand drill here. Now this doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but a good way of lining up these Forstner bits is to watch the cut that it makes around. If it's making the cut evenly all the way around, to begin with, try to maintain that angle as you're going through because you know it's 90 degrees to the work. Now I'm going to glue these together. I'm not going to put a lot of glue on here. I just want to make sure they stay together until it's dry. Now I've got the shaft and that goes down through all the holes. And then I've got this pulley here. This is actually a steel sheave. And these are really well made. So this will actually help it stay 90 degrees to the shaft as it dries overnight. It's the next day I gave the glue overnight to dry. What I got set up here now is a rig for checking to see if there's any wobble in the wheel as I have it set up here. It's not bad. I don't have to fix it before I attach these bearing blocks that I got on a special a couple years ago actually. Um, these are ones that I normally wouldn't buy. I prefer to buy the raw bearing and mount it in my own block. But these were super cheap, so I bought them. And they've been sitting here ever since, so I'm going to use them for this. I also set up a stick here with a pencil sticking out of the end of it, so it'll make a mark on the wheel. But I'm not going to do anything with this now. Like I say, it's close. There is some wobble there, but I can work with it after. What I need to do now is I need to actually bolt these things on and I'm going to do that with pieces of 3 8 threaded rod, cut the length, then I'll drill the holes through the wheels and put the threaded rod in. Before I bolt on the bearings, I need to true up the wheel as much as I can here on the disc sander while I still have the 5 8 inch hole in the middle. What I'm going to do after this is drill that out a bit bigger so that the shaft fits in there and doesn't run. I finished truing up the wheel, put the shaft back in, I put the bearings back on and I've lined them up at the holes. Now to make sure that these are sitting down flat because these actually can rotate. So I just pound it with the rubber mallet like that to make sure it's flat down on the wheel. And now I'm going to mark all the way around it with a very fine pen. I'm also going to mark the orientation on each bearing so that I'll be able to put it back in exactly the same place. Now that I've got both bearings marked, I can take them out again, take the shaft out, and I'm going to ream out the hole to three quarters of an inch so that the shaft will turn freely inside there. Now notice I'm using kind of a guide here to help start the bit. After it gets going, I can take the guide off and finish drilling the hole. Now the threaded rods are tight inside the hole in the wheel but the bearing block itself can move around a little bit and you'll need that for adjustment.
Now I want to get this wheel set up so there's very little wobble and then I'll balance it. I'm going to concentrate on the bearing that's on this side of the wheel. And I've got it lined up with my original marks here. And just to hold it in that place and make sure that it doesn't move, I'm going to put some hot melt glue around it. And that should keep it from moving while I adjust the other side. Once again, I've got my thing set up here so that I can check the wobble. I've also got my stick with the pencil on it to mark where it needs to be adjusted. Now all I need to do is adjust the bearing on the other side. I've got these studs put in here. They're tight, but they're not too tight. So I can move this just by tapping on it. And what that'll do is it'll offset and it should, with the right number of adjustments, make this run without any wobble. Well, I got it looking pretty good. It's still not perfect. There's still just a very small wobble there. But balance is more important than wobble. If your wheel is well balanced, then it can wobble a little bit and it really won't matter. I'm going to tighten the nuts and then I'm going to check it again just to make sure that nothing moved or it didn't get worse. Who knows, maybe it'll get better. Anything's possible. And But these have to be tight. You don't want these coming off. To balance the wheel, I'm going to do it the same way that I did the impellers that I made recently. I've got these two steel bars clamped down to my bandsaw table. And I just take this and set it in place. And that'll tell me where the heavy side is and I'll drill a shallow hole to balance the wheel. Now, I, I had to drill another hole, but it looks like it's good now. Um, once again, I'm not looking for perfection as long as it's close enough. One way to keep these bearing blocks in place so that they don't move side to side is to make plywood rings that go around that fit tight to them. I'm going to go with construction adhesive, put right into the corners here like this, and that will, that should do the same thing. This stuff sets up really hard. And um, when I'm done with the machine, like when I'm finished using it, I can always chip this right off. It should come right off fairly easily. Let's put that in and then smooth it out with my thumb. It's a couple of days later. I've got the other wheel done and I didn't want to show the details on that because it's exactly the same as the first one except it doesn't have the pulley or the spacer and it's a couple days later also because I wanted for this construction adhesive to thoroughly dry before I moved on and it takes quite a while especially when you hump it up inside there like that now what I want to do here now is uh, slightly crown these wheels there's a couple of different ways to do that, but the way that I'm going to do it right now is to do it with my belt sander. <laughs> and uh, I'm not looking for a very big crown. I just want to ease the corners a little bit, you know. So start up the belt sander, take the wheel, and it will rotate on the belt sander. And I'll angle it like this, and that will actually slow it down and make it, you know, cut evenly all the way around. Got to go get some lumber out of the shed. Those are ones I want right there. Okay, three of those should do it. Um, I'm using these because, first of all, I have them, and second of all, they're nice and straight, and they're dry, and they're not going to twist up on me and throw everything out of alignment, which is important for this.
I picked out three. Those are all that I'm willing to spare for this. Normally, if this machine was going to be something that I would keep, I would build it out of steel angle, all these parts, just to make sure that it stayed in alignment. So what I'm doing now is I'm checking to see which ones of the three are the straightest. These have a slight twist, so what I'm doing with the hand plane is I'm just taking down the edges that will make it sit flat. These are the only parts that have to be really straight and flat, so I'm going to take the time to do that now. That feels pretty good. Then I'm going to cut off one edge, move the fence over, cut a little bit off the other side, and then I can turn the stock on edge and cut the bottom and then the top. It takes several shallow passes, flipping the wood each time to get rid of all the twists and warps. I could do this faster, I guess, if I had a jointer, but I don't have one. Here are the frame pieces that hold the wheels in. And on one end, the drive wheel is held pretty much stationary. I'm going to mark those out eight and a half inches from the end. The first one I'm going to drill to 5 8 so the axle fits right in there neatly. But the other one I'm going to drill oversize, I'm going to drill that one inch and that will give me room to adjust the wheel. Okay, I've got the one inch hole there. I need a piece of plywood to make an adjustment collar, you could say. This is gonna have a 5 8 inch hole in it, and it's gonna bolt right onto that frame member, and I'll be able to move the collar around to adjust the wheel. Here's the plywood block, 5 8 inch hole here, and half inch holes over here. It's gonna slip onto the shaft. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp it in place and then I'm going to drill half inch holes through the frame member as well. And that will be for the bolts that hold the plywood block in place. Okay, more threaded rod. Cut to length and washers and nuts. I made the holes. These are 3 eighths, the threaded rod. I made the holes half inch to give me a lot of leeway here to move this around to adjust it. After I get this all put together and adjusted with the blade on it, tension, the whole works, I'll drive a couple of screws, maybe four screws through this plywood into the lumber to lock that in position and won't move. So it won't be just relying on the bolts. Well, I've got the wheel put back in, tied up against the frame members. I can get a measurement for how long the two cross pieces that go in here need to be. So I check the end to make sure it's square and that looks good. I took the time to pull that side off and put the belt in. Now that's uh, just to have it there. None of this is getting glued together. I'm going to be just screwing it off. Now up here at the other end, it's a little more tricky. This wheel, <clears throat> has to be able to move back and forth to put tension on the blade. It also has to be able to tilt like that. 
so that I can adjust the tracking. And I thought about that long and hard, but I came up with a fairly simple way of doing it. And it starts with me drilling slotted holes here in these members that the shaft will fit completely through and allow it to move back and forth. Would have been a bit easier to drill these out on the drill press. I already knew the measurements, but I had to double check it here. Anyways, I can do it by hand just as easily. These don't have to be precise. They just need to let the shaft move. Okay, I made these things right here. And what they do is they lock into the shaft on the front wheel. We'll call it the top wheel because it's the one that, you know, you adjust. And um, it moves back and forth. To move back and forth, I cut these rabbits in here. I also cut out these things right here, and they fit right in there. And the idea there is that this will screw onto that, that'll screw onto the thing. This thing will be free to slide back and forth. These are actually the guides, and I got to put those together now. Now the screws are a bit long, but that's not a big deal. I'll just cut those off on the table saw. Very nearly done with these now. I drilled a one inch hole in here. And then I flatten the end for a washer. And once again, I've got 3 8 inch threaded rod and I've shoved it in here and I put a nut on it. And what that'll do is it'll pull on it and that won't come apart. Pretty good. I've already put that one together. I'm just going to slip this one in and put a nut on it. This goes here, and the wheel, I'm pretty sure the wheel goes, yeah, the wheel goes here, so it's in the hole, through the thing, got it. Then the other one goes on, or no, this goes on the outside, so we'll put the frame back on. These parts are the guides and they go on next. They're just going to screw onto the frame like that and they'll allow this to move back and forth. I made both ends. I've got that one attached down there already. I already had this one attached. See the two holes here are for the threaded rods that come through. Of course I had to take it all off again to <laughs> Do some other repairs. Okay, now I've got it back together. I'm going to try to put the blade on. Now, these wheels have not been adjusted yet. They need to be lined up. Now, these rods come through here and they do two things. They put tension on the blade by pulling the wheel this way and also they'll be able to adjust the tracking if you adjust one individually it'll move the wheel like that which will adjust the tracking that's the theory anyway <laughs> we'll see how it works in practice now before I put any tension on the blade at all I need to get this wheel close where it should be and measure from the face of it back to the frame. It doesn't look too bad. Well, it doesn't take much adjustment on that plywood plate. 
to move this quite a lot actually. It's a little tap will make a big difference. I think that looks pretty good right there. Now that that's tightened up, I can tighten up these nuts here and put some tension on the blade. That's looking not bad. And I'll use this straight edge to see how in line the wheels are. A little bit more on the bottom here. Okay, that looks pretty good. Of course, I re won't really know how well it's tracking until it's power, actually powered, but this looks pretty good. A popular thing to use for the tires are bicycle inner tubes. Up until recently, I had them on my bandsaw, but I took them off to try an idea that I had. This is silicone caulking. This is 100% silicone, um, clear. A lot of people call anything that's in a tube silicone, but this is actually silicone. And it has to be, this is, you know, the clear rubbery stuff when it dries. And I'm going to use that as tires on here. I did it on my bandsaw. It's holding up well. It's easy. All you need to do is tube it on like this and then spread it on with your finger reasonably evenly. It doesn't have to be super smooth because it does compress. And I'm just going to take my finger and smooth it out. Uh, a couple days later, I let the silicone dry. I put the blade back on. I tensioned it up. It's pretty good. And now I'm getting ready to attach the legs. Cut those out of a used 2x4s. To attach them to the frame, I'm going to be using these gusset blocks that will go right on here and screw through to the leg. So, if you've been following along on the forum, you'll know that this saw uh, is fixed. It doesn't move. You'll see some that are on rollers. They roll forwards. This one is on legs also that don't adjust up and down. Instead, I'll be making a flat dolly with a short piece of log to sit on, and that'll roll through, be caught on the blade. And then I'll just lift that up by stacking boards either underneath the casters that the dolly will roll on, or by stacking underneath the piece of wood itself. The main advantage to doing it that way is it's less complex. Also, I can make the frame very stiff without a lot of work. Okay, it's back out to the shed to get more lumber. I need pieces for braces, and I think that these short pieces of tongue groove board I've got here will be long enough. I don't want to take ones that are too nice looking. I get the ones that are beat up or full of knots. Gotta pull the nails up before I can use it though. Should have done that before. Put it in the shed. I guess I could get all fancy and measure and cut, you know, the right angles here and all that, but in the interest of getting it done, I'm just gonna have to put these on like that. It really doesn't make a difference. Actually, it adds to the charm when you have, you know, that little bit sticking out there. This would be better with two people, I'm sure, but uh, when you work alone, most of the time, 
You get used to doing stuff like this by yourself. Well, the frame is all braced up, but I need a place to put this big motor. And that has to be pretty solid. So, dig through the junk I've got piled up in the corner over here. And I got this piece of melamine. I'll use that. I've got the melamine cut to put in. But first, I need to add this cross member. Just screws into the frame on both sides. This piece of melamine not only supports the motor, it also helps to brace up the top to keep that from racking. What I wind up with is a very strong frame that resists moving while the cutting is going on. Okay, I've got the motor put on and the belt hooked up. I've also checked the tracking on the blade here. It looks good. I've got a cord put on the, cord, on the motor. Now this is 120 even though I'll be running this uh, on 220 or 240. Uh, but right now I want to test it. So, my fingers crossed. Hopefully, the blade stays on. Looks good. I spent some more time making sure that the tracking was perfect on these two wheels. I got it well enough that I feel confident that I can boost the speed up. So to do that, I added a piece of plywood to the front of the pulley, and then I turned that into a pulley shape just with it mounted on the motor. I'm getting quite a bit of chatter there while I'm turning it. I really should have clamped down the motor a little bit better. So that takes the blade speed up to around 3,500 feet per minute. I may take it even higher. I'll have to see how the thing cuts. I also made these things right here, and these are going to be my blade guides for the saw. These are just short lengths of steel angle with pieces of ceramic tile glue down with construction adhesive. I use my grinder with a diamond blade to cut the pieces of ceramic tile from a larger tile that I already had. To attach them, I drilled a 3 8 inch hole in the other side of the angle, and that'll allow me to screw it right onto the support. Okay, I measured the distance between the blade, where it is, and the frame, and I need pieces that are 2 and 3 quarters inches wide, and I got this piece of, well, you guess it used to be 2 by 8, but I cut some off it already, and I'll cut it from that. Now I can cut them to length on the miter saw, and then I can screw them to the frame. But first I have to remove the motor and some of the other stuff that I put on there so that I can access the back of the frame. The way blade guides work is that they don't actually touch the blade when it's running. It's only when the blade tries to move up or down in this case that it will constrain it and keep it on track. It'll also keep it from twisting too much as well. I've got my first one in place here. I squared it down from the frame. Now the idea is to get it over as far as I can that way, but it still has to fit in between the blade and the wheel. I put the right amount of tension on the blade for it, and I'm going to take the other guide, 
put it in place down underneath and mark the location for that. Now I can take it off again and bring it over to the table saw workbench and drill the hole and drive the screw. Now once these are in place I can still adjust them a little bit because I drilled the hole in the steel angle oversized. Now I've got the second guide on. I've got it put in and clamped up tight where it's supposed to be. I'm going to screw it in place temporarily. I'll have to take it off again because I need to put the thrust bearing on, the one that keeps the blade from pushing back. For the thrust bearings, I'm using regular ball bearings here. And I bolted it onto an aluminum angle. This is the same angle that I use to line up the wheels. And that's going to attach to the side of the blade guide like that. I've drilled the holes oversized here so that I'll be able to move it in and out slightly to adjust it. To mark it, I've got the blade guide put back in. And I'm just going to hold it up so that the bearing is lined up, centered on the blade. And then mark where the angle meets the blade guide. Then I can take it off, drill the holes, and screw it on. The idea here is to get it close to the point where it's not going to need a whole lot of adjustment. And then I've left enough space here with these oversized holes to move it in and out enough to make the final adjustments. I adjusted it to where it should be, and now to lock it in place, I've drilled a smaller hole, and I'm going to drive a screw into that. Well, I got the other set of blade guides done and adjusted, and I also built a simple guard that will more or less keep the blade from flicking off in case it breaks. I also got the motor put back in, at least temporarily. I've got to take it off again to rewire it for 240. So with all that done, I can give it another try. To see how well the blade guides are, are working. Well, let's back out to the shed again. Get another couple of try for us to make the dolly. I've also got these casters here. First thing I gotta do is trim off the ends. I gotta watch these ones though because they have nails in them that couldn't be pulled out or I was too lazy to pull out actually. Then I want them to be 48 inches long, and that's how long the cart's going to be. Make sure I got no nails there, and cut it off. Well, there's not a whole lot to this cart. It's very easy to make. I got these two longer pieces here. The casters just get screwed in place on the end here. I'm going to use one and a quarter inch screws. Through the holes that I already drilled before when I mounted it onto the cabinet. The way this card is put together is that these long pieces go through, the casters are attached to that, and then the part that actually holds up the logs are underslung, they're underneath the cart, so that they stick down. Uh, the problem with that is that really puts a lot of pressure on these joints where they join to the long pieces, so they have to be strong. So I'm going to use 3 8 threaded rod again to put those together.
it's put together. See how it rolls. Works great. The idea behind the fixed casters is that you only want it to go straight, <laughs> you know, one direction back and forth. The swivel casters won't work here. This thing is going to be a day's work just moving this log over. Man, this is heavy. Wow. Okay, I'm going to leave that one until I can get some help. It's just too big for me to move by myself. Instead, I'll be trying to get this one out. This is shorter, but it's actually bigger. Ah. Yeah, this one's uh, 24 inches across. So, this is the... Thickest one I got, I think. So I'm trying to stand it up. Ugh. And to add to this, I got black flies bigger than horses flying around here. Bad time of the year for this type of thing. Wow, that's incredibly heavy. I got it over here and I had to add a couple of slots to the cart because this is shorter than those supports. I just got to try to get that onto that without killing myself. I'll tell you my hat's off to anybody that does this kind of thing on a regular basis. This is hard work. It's the kind of stuff that I would you know, do when I was younger, but now, oh man. Okay, well, I can see I got a problem here. This way, it's too high. It's going to hit my frame. It won't fit underneath it. So I'm going to have to <laughs> reposition it. Yeah, that looks like it'll go. I got a little bit of chatter when I, you know, tried to up the feed rate, or I accidentally up the feed rate by pushing it a bit too hard. But I find that with that stick levering it ahead, that really works well. That's going to sweep it off and have a look at it here. I got some spalting there. That goes through the center of the piece. Make the next cut, I'm going to lever it up and put pieces of one inch board underneath it. Let's 
second cut seems to be still doing well. It's not drifting. These pieces are as straight as the track is, which is pretty straight. This is an even one and an eighth inch thick. I gotta try to do is stand it up the way I had it in the beginning now because I think it'll fit down better inside the cart. But it's uh, not really any lighter. <laughs> Well, it took a lot of messing around, but I got it upright where I wanted. I had to lower the front by screwing this piece of board on so that this branch will maybe clear the frame now. I don't know. It's going to be close. I might have to chisel a little bit off the top. That was a tough cut. I was cutting through, I guess, around 12 inches through most of it. And you can see, I'm gonna get the brush and brush it off. Okay, what that gives me is a flat side here. So I can flip it over now and continue cutting. I'll flip it again several times. I'm looking to you know not get the widest boards but the best looking boards out of this now that I've got it down to a manageable size okay I got it flipped over again and I'm getting ready to cut it again this time though I'll be cutting through it looks like around 15 inches so that's gonna be a tough one that's gonna take some time So it took a long time and I had to stop there because I'm drifting downwards and the saw is almost stalling so I don't know what the reason for that is maybe it's the width of the cut that I'm making here maybe I need to crank up the tension a bit more I'm just gonna try to break that free Yeah, you can see how low it dipped. Let's have a look at it. It's nice wood anyway, that's for sure. I flipped the log completely over again. I also cranked up the tension to see if it'll cure that drifting problem. Now bumping up the blade tension seemed to solve the drift problem. That's through this no problem. Well, I can tell that the blade is getting dull though, because it's certainly not cutting as fast as it was in the beginning. I think more than getting dull, the teeth are getting really gummed up with sap from the cutting. I'm not sure if a like a water drip system would help with that probably would i got my log lifted up again another inch i also set up a kind of a mickey mouse drip system that will more or less put water down onto the blade i'm gonna bucket of water right here hopefully i aimed it correctly well the water seemed to work the blade is a lot cleaner it's not gummed up like it was. I did find the blade starting to drift downwards again, so I stopped. I'm not sure if that's because of the water or if I increased my feed rate. 
because the water is stripping and you want to hurry up before the water runs out type thing. Um, another thing is it makes a damn mess. Everything's covered with water. And as we all know, water and MDF don't mix. Okay, another thing about water, it's more likely that the blade will come off the wheel. Yeah, there won't be any saving this. This is a lot of work. This is way more work than it's really worth for what you're getting. Um, I guess if I didn't have access to this kind of wood, if it was really, really expensive and I simply just couldn't get it, then it would make sense to do something like this. But wow, this takes a long time, especially wood this size. It takes a long time to cut through it. And how many cuts did I make? Made six cuts and the blade was starting to get all gummed up. So an ongoing problem that will slow down the process as you go along. Well, it's a few days later. I've got the saw covered up with a tarp, as you can see. It hasn't rained since, but I wanna make sure that if it does, it's protected. I'm waiting for a new blade to come, one that will be better suited to cutting uh, through this kind of wood this thickness of cut just to give the saw another try you know I'm not going to give up on anything too quick I've already got the piece sitting there waiting so should be a couple of days I don't know if I'll do an update video I'll probably post pictures on Google Plus or Facebook of what I get out of it eventually all in all it was a great project to do I had fun doing it if I had to do it again I think I would change a few things but not much um, for more permanent build, I think I would start with steel for everything. That way I don't have to worry about it being out in the weather or using water with it. Another thing is, I think I would pick a different time of the year. One when the black flies are not swarming. That was a rough day with that. They were, you know, driving me crazy, working hard at it. So I kind of lost my patience a little bit. I really should have stopped after, say, the fourth cut and sharpen the blade and that would have you know really helped out with how well it was cutting thereafter